as sure. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everybody. It's lovely to be here. Um, and I think today I'm just going to give a really brief, as I've only got 15 minutes and not maybe 15 months, um, overview of um, my life as somebody with multiple sclerosis and my journey so far, having a newly registered charity and just a bit of mental health. So um, I was diagnosed with relapsing and remitting at multiple sclerosis in March 2016. Uh, I had my first symptom in March 2015. And honestly, that's where my advocacy journey started. Albeit a strange one, because I was advocating for something that I didn't know I had, or in my case, didn't have. Um, I was misdiagnosed four times before finally being given an MRI in November of 2015. And I remember having that MRI and being promised that if there was anything wrong, they would let me know. And I know it feels as though I've gone right into the deep end of my story, but honestly, it laid the foundation for where, where I am today. Um, and I remember waiting, November came, December came, 2015. I had no call. So as far as I was concerned, I must be okay. Uh, January happened and I was supposed to have a follow-up appointment and the appointment got cancelled. So again, in my eyes, I must be okay. And I caught the flu at the end of February and it trickled into the beginning of March. And honestly, my body started to shut down. I remember the 5th of March, 2016, I wet myself. At the time I was 28 and I shouldn't of been wetting myself because as far as I was concerned or, or as far as I knew, based on the fact that I hadn't been given any results from my MRI, everything must be quote unquote, okay. I was so wrong. And, you know, the lead up those months led me to where I am today. So like I said, I was diagnosed officially on the 8th of March, 2016. Um, when diagnosed, I was already in a stage of paralysis because my lower body had shut down completely um, and it was a journey. So I went through an extensive four months of getting or trying to get back on my feet and that, in hindsight, led me to want to help other people. So I'll double back. My first symptom was... Um, pins and needles in the soles of both feet and that is very strange because pins and needles for 20 seconds is painful let alone it's now been eight years and they've never stopped I just take medication to have them subside a bit because it can be quite painful on my bad days now it's been a difficult journey because I'm a sibling with MS so my younger brother, Daniel, was diagnosed in September 2009. And that journey alone was a lot for my family, including my son, who was two years old at the time of him deteriorating quite badly. So what I knew, however, despite me going through that diagnosis, despite me being, you know, paralyzed from the waist down, I didn't want anybody else to go through that medical negligence that I had faced. And that was the start of Talks for a Mess. Um, and it was also me wanting to create a community that I wish my brother had at the time of his diagnosis. He was a 21-year-old black man and he was almost completely isolated. It seemed as though nobody wanted to help him. And that also had a negative impact on his mental health. I wanted to build a community I wish my brother had. Ooh. So what is MS? Um, in brief, MS is a chronic neurological condition that affects the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. Um, it's also an autoimmune disease, meaning that the body's immune system mistakenly attacks the protective covering of the nerve fibers called myelin. It makes no sense for your body to actively attack the part that is okay. It means that as much as today my right hand may feel okay if I wake up tomorrow morning, 
MS may decide, okay, so you thought your right hand was okay. I'm going to take that away from you. And it is so easily done and something that people go through day in, day out. Um, so what is life like with MS running a charity based on my diagnosis and my mental health? It is challenging. It is triggering. It is overwhelming. Um, and yeah, it challenges my mental health sometimes, not necessarily in a positive way, but then on the flip side, it can sometimes be comforting. And that may sound strange. However, the community that I've managed to find on the back of my diagnosis has allowed me to feel that I'm not alone. And um, it's allowed me to be able to share my story with people that can say, I understand or I've been through that too. And not necessarily from a toxic positivity point of view. And as much as how can positivity be toxic, for someone to say you will be okay when you've been diagnosed with an incurable disease to date, that in itself isn't always the most helpful, but it is definitely something that, you know, people with incurable disease and visible disabilities and invisible disabilities face day in, day out. Now, Talks for MS was created to be a safe space for people to speak on anything that they were dealing with. And honestly, I didn't realize how much I needed the community that I had created. So what is Talks for MS? Talks for MS acts as a big brother, big sister platform, newly registered charity, the 13th of January 2023, and that aims to support, empower, and empower people with multiple sclerosis. It allows people with MS to speak freely with others that know exactly what they are going through based on lived, lived experiences. And we encourage healthy conversations. It is a safe space. Our mission, our charitable mission, um, is to enhance the visibility of multiple sclerosis within the UK with a particular emphasis on the underrepresented black brown community. Now, we strive to promote a greater representation and inclusion, ensuring that we are actively part of this ever expanding and inclusive world. I always say diversity and inclusion should also include me and people that look like me. Now we aim to enhance awareness and understanding of multiple sclerosis while offering valuable advice and support based on lived experiences. And we accomplish this in many ways from in-person events to peer support groups, advocacy and campaigning and also research participation. Now, I feel like I wrote so many things down and there's so many things that's going to go unsaid. And that's because sometimes it is okay to just talk and in the moment be your vulnerable, transparent self. Now, I remember when I was looking at starting Talks for MS, and when I was doing my research behind the scenes, I didn't know how I was going to put my resources out purely because everybody was almost doing the same thing. So I had to take it from a different perspective. Now, I now have a 14 year old, but at the time he was seven. And like I said, MS has been in my family from the year he was born in 2009. So only a few months after he was born, my brother was diagnosed with MS. So my resources and my way of putting out education is from the mind's eye of a child because I wanted everybody to be able to understand what we were dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and like with everything no two people are the same not only are there four different types of MS no two people including myself and my biological brother who have the same mum and dad we still deal with the disease in different ways our symptoms are very much different so I've always put it from a perspective of wanting to speak and wanting to write how I would expect or how I would like my child to be able to understand in that moment without almost putting a sense of fear on him, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to touch a little bit on what an invisible disability is now. An invisible disability obviously sometimes refers to the mental or cognitive impairment that is not immediately apparent to 
others because there's no obvious external signs or visible symptoms. These disabilities can be chronic in nature and significantly impact an individual's life and functioning, even though they may not be readily observable. And part of the reason I wanted to touch on that is because I recently went to New York and I was at JFK Airport. And as much as I had special assistance on my ticket, because my thing is chronic pain, I suffer with pain day in, day out. I haven't not had a day without pain for the last eight years. It's almost like I had to defend a disability that not only did I not ask for, but in the moment was extremely triggering. And I was in a space where I was saying, wow, the ignorance, because I was being told, well, you look fine. I actually got physically moved out of the way with someone pushing someone else in a wheelchair because apparently I shouldn't have been in that line. And I was triggered to say the very least. And I had to go as far as saying to the guy, listen, I could wake up in the morning and be completely paralyzed based on how my disease is. It is one of the most, like, it, I could be fine today and not so great tomorrow. And he looked at me and he said, well, I hope that doesn't happen, but I still don't know what, you're, what you suffer from. <laughs> and I said, okay, great. And as you know, America is very very different to the UK so I had to be very mindful of how I was speaking and how I approached that situation but albeit it was extremely triggering and honestly it's something that would stop me from going back there and because I'm not necessarily somebody that speaks maybe freely about what I'm going with because I do run the platform but in that moment there will be a chance for me to I have no choice but to speak up and that's why I wanted to kind of touch on invisible disabilities a little bit today. And like I said, they can range from chronic pain to fibromyalgia, for example, mental health conditions, anxiety and PTSD, um, autoimmune disorders, lupus and multiple sclerosis, neurological disorders, epilepsy and migraines. Migraines are not just headaches. Um, Chronic fatigue syndrome chronic digestive disorders, and we're looking at Crohn's and IBS, Um, learning disabilities, and they range from a number of things from ADHD to to dyslexia. Living with an invisible disability is triggering and can present its own unique challenges, including the need to explain one's condition to others. Face-to-face scepticism or misunderstanding and obviously navigate a world that may not be able to provide adequate accommodations or support. It's important to recognise and respect individuals with invisible disabilities as they may require a little bit more understanding, accommodations and support to manage their condition effectively while trying to live a fulfilling life. Um, I did kind of want to touch on my mental health a little bit but what I will say is that living with any disability can pose unique and often misunderstood mental health challenges for individuals Um, as you can see I'm a black woman with a currently invisible disability and I'm often in a position where like I said before I do have to defend what I go through on a day-to-day basis but I've almost made I've almost learned to make good out of a crap situation. Um, I personally struggle with social isolation and I rarely go anywhere without a safe person. And that's because in the moment, anything could happen. And I was, I've been in situations before where I had a bit of road rage once and I was in the car by myself and out of nowhere, my leg just started to spasm uncontrollably. And in the moment, I was so scared because I was very early into my diagnosis and I had to stop the car and literally wait for my leg to decide what it wanted to do because I had no control over it in the moment. And for that reason now, very rarely do I go to any large function and um, without a safe person. And, you know, it's it sometimes can lead to judgment from friends and family. I've had family members forget that there was ever or that there was even anything wrong with me. And again, I think to myself, 
it's hard, not because they don't understand, but again, because I have to defend my disability day in, day out, just because of how I present. Um, I, I suffer with stress and anxiety and that whole misunderstanding and stigma behind having an invisible disability. It can sometimes be a lot, but I am cautious of not rambling. One thing I do, um, one thing I do do a lot with within talks to MS is advocacy. And a bit like Zoe said, I advocate for myself. I advocate for those without a voice. And in my in my world, that's my brother, because he is completely paralyzed and is no longer able to speak. So I advocate heavily for him. But I also advocate for people that are just tired. Because dealing with medical professionals day in, day out, sometimes, again, I know I've said that triggering word a lot, but it is. And especially when you feel like you're not being heard, I try my hardest, especially when I'm in a mind frame to do so, to go for back for people that are just knackered, knackered of having to talk about what they're going through, knackered of having to defend, knackered of having to get a medical professional to believe what they're going through. Because that in itself is a tough one. But what I will say, and it's so fitting that we just had the allies category. One thing that I would love to leave with our allies, which I hope can provide maybe a bit of a mustard seed of understanding, is just because we can do it today doesn't mean we can do it tomorrow. Sometimes we are in pain 24 hours a day. And me personally, while I may not walk around saying out at every step, the pain is a very real. Um, I'm not tired. I'm fatigued. It's very different. If I say I'm exhausted or I am tired, do not say me too. Because I can sleep for maybe five days. Whereas you could do five hours and be fit and ready to fight the fire. I'm not that person. Um, and MS is a lifelong condition. Like many other disabilities, do not tell us. We will be okay soon. Whew. But in closing, I promise, <laughs> um, some of the more positive outtakes that I take, and I promise it's not toxic positivity, but it is time to make these disabilities famous. Famous in a sense of where we need more coverage. We need more representation. We deserve to be out there. We have stories and we all need to be heard. Turn that pain into champagne. It is so important to understand that our suffering does not need to be in vain and we could really be helping our counterparts. Um, even if you have a bad day today, anticipate a better day tomorrow. And even if tomorrow comes and you still may be feeling low, write it down. Because when you do finally have that good day and you're able to reflect, you'll be able to see how far you've come. Remember that, yes, we may have a disability, but we are more than our disability. Think of your life outside of that box that sometimes we are so squashed into. And my ethos remains without peace. There is no understanding. And I hope you all give yourself the chance to be great.